So today's project is I'm going to fabricate a stand for um, the seven and a half horsepower air compressor head. So I bought a pair of these a few months ago on eBay. They are Schrader uh, air compressors, and there's a reason you've never heard of Schrader. Um, it appears to be a well-built compressor with crappy support. Um, yeah, I, I called them and asked them for specs on how loud it was, and they basically acted like I'd asked them for the recipe for moon dust. Um, it's really unfortunate, and then they went on to tell me that these compressors were built for a specific customer, and I'm like, yeah, I know that, but I bought them from an air compressor company, so, you know, you either support your equipment or you don't. And unfortunately, Schrader doesn't appear to offer much support for their equipment, which is why you've never heard of them. So maybe if they see this, they'll start to treat all their equipment as if it was their most important equipment, and then maybe one day they could become like Champion or Quincy. So anyway, I'm going to build a stand for these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them up in duplexing. Now most people run duplexing compressors where one kicks in and if the air demand continues to be too high, the second one kicks in. And, and that's not my purpose. My purpose is redundancy. So I'm going to um, set them up where one runs and then the other runs. And eventually I'll build a controller for them. But in the meanwhile, I just need to get them on a frame um, so that I can put them in my shop. And so I've got some steel. I've got my Evolution Rage 2 cutoff saw. I just did a video review on this. This thing is amazing. And I've got this really large piece of metal that will become an air compressor when I'm done with it. So first things first, I've measured the space that it needs to go into. And I've measured the dimensions of the base that I'll mount, and I've also measured the dimensions of the unit because it overhangs a little bit. And I, I plan to really um, radically rework this to make a compressed air plant, which is different from just simply installing an air compressor like I've got in the corner. Uh, I've got a US General Air um, Superior Rattery. Um, now it's, it's just a really loud, unmuffled compressor. And this is probably unmuffled and somewhat loud too. Um, these will eventually get replaced because a substantial part of the noise in a compressor comes from your air filters. So I will unscrew these and replace these. But now that I've introduced the project, let's get building. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, cut the pieces and then I'm going to treat them for rust with some um, phosphoric acid that I bought at Home Depot. I, I just want to neutralize the rust and turn it into iron phosphate, which won't corrode anymore. Uh, this material is left over from when I built my aquarium stand. Um, I bought more of it than I needed. Um, I, I tend to do that a lot. And um, it's been sitting outside for a while, so it's got a lot of um, mill scale is the affectionate term for it, but let's just call it what it is, surface rust. Um, so anyway, without further ado, the first thing I need to do is I need to cut the cross braces for this thing. Um, so I'm going to get started on it. And it turns out that these, the base of this is three and a half inches high. I got down here and measured it with a level. So if you uh, need to cut specific sizes, that's, that's the magic number. So first things first, I need to true this up before I can actually cut it. Ah, there they are. And I'm gonna wear, this is eye protection and ear protection. Um, this sounds a little bit on the loud side, not unusually, not unreasonably loud. And um, So there's our first cut, and what we need to do now is mark where the second cut goes. I've got a screwdriver which can serve as a trusty scribe. All 
right, so that looks pretty good right there. So the only downside to this saw is it does shoot chips, but it's really not that big of a deal. Alright, so let's see how close that was. I'm off by a sixteenth of an inch. I'll probably live. So I'm, um, you know, watching me cut's probably not going to be that exciting, so I'm going to stop the camera while I cut. So I got all my cuts done almost, but I realize I'm an inch short of material, so I was going to make the second compressor 30 inches above the first compressor, but I don't think that's going to work because I'm short one inch of material on one of my uprights and um, quite frankly if I had measured a little differently I probably wouldn't be an inch short because I have some cutoffs over here but you know once you cut the metal you can't really put it back together I mean, you can you could weld it but at any rate so what I'm going to do is I'm going to recut the other three uprights and make them 29 inches tall and it'll just be an inch shorter than I was originally planning for it to be and um, it's not really a big deal, you know. That's part of the beauty of fabricating stuff yourself is you can make adjustments on the fly. Um, sometimes it's called rigging, but um, I just call it, you know, adjusting to reality. And um, I don't feel like buying a whole other stick of this material for this project just for this, because I'd have to buy 40 feet of material. Now, the reality is I'll end up buying 40 feet of material anyway, for something else because I really like the look of this four inch square tubing. But for this project, I'm going to go ahead and cut down the other three pieces and um, I'll, I'll film this because it's really pretty remarkable how fast. Um, I, I think this cutting all this down took me maybe 20 minutes and a lot of that is uh, set up and take on and take off my um, personal protective gear. Now I did start wearing my little welding hat because I don't like picking chips out of my hair and um, my only gripe is it keeps flinging hot chips at me and that's well kind of irritating. So that one's now done because it's 29. I swear I marked this. Oh well, let's put it up here and mark it again. So I'm just using my screwdriver to scrub this, which is uh, good enough for this. And then I'm going to go ahead and scribe the other three while I'm at it, or the other two. Those are marked, and what I'll do is just kind of bring this down and line this up. Let's see, the only thing I don't like about this saw is it doesn't have a laser. Um, and I haven't had the line 
stuff up by hand in ages. Mm, that looks good. So I'll get my gear on.
Okay, so at this point I've done all my cutting and now I'm going to take a minute and just kind of clean up all this, um, all these chips that are all over the place and I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs>